Hey there, I'm McKenna, and welcome on our spooky Halloween special for Shelby Whiffet News. This week we are ghost hunting for Bobby, the middle school ghost. It's been rumored that this ghost used to live at the middle, old middle school. However, it seems that this ghost has followed us to our new middle school. Have you ever heard of Bobby the ghost? Well, here's what the people said and when they heard. Ghosts aren't real, that's stupid. I've never heard about the middle school ghosts. That they were running around and uh, they would come visit people while they were uh, practicing for uh, some of the plays and for uh, talent shows. There's a middle school ghost? Because they aren't real? This scares me. I feel like there's a ghost that's going to jump out of my closet or something. Why out of your closet? Uh, why out of my closet? Yeah, why out of your closet? Because that's where all ghosts come from. It is? Yeah, it is. I don't believe that. Wow, that was really creepy. In fact, our expert, Mrs. Swiger, has more information about this ghost that seems to be roaming our halls. Jessica recently sat down with Mrs. Swiger to get some more ghoulish facts. The middle school ghost or what I call the middle school ghost, usually uh, would hang out around the auditorium at the old middle school. Um, we could see shadows at the bottom of the stairway in the gym or in the auditorium. Um, we could see him on the second floor hallway right off of the balcony of the auditorium. Um, sometimes there were unexplained things that took place um, like we would be in the middle of the show and all of a sudden we had no lights on stage. There's also um, cases where we didn't have music, we couldn't figure out why the music would stop. We'd walk away for 10 minutes, come back and not touch anything, and we would have music. So there's just little things like that that, um, that happened that they were more unexplained things than actual seeing a ghost. More unexplained things than actual ghostly things. Wow, Mrs. Swigert seems to be investigating like a ghost hunter. Hey, hearing of ghost hunters reminds me of my friends Julia and Olivia. Over the past couple weeks, they have been hunting for Bobby. Let's go see what they have found. Hello, we are a research team and we research the activities that happen in the later hours of school. We have been called to Shelby Middle School in the case of Bobby, the middle school ghost. ghost. Bobby has been seen going to the library, looking through books. He has been seen playing in the band rooms on the bells. He's also been seen walking up the ramps for no apparent reason. He's also chased some people across the stage. Wait, did you hear that? There's the ghost and the chase is on. Go, go, go. We have tracked Bobby to this exact location. We are trying to find out his motives. We're unsure where he is, but wait. It is there the ghost. We've chased the ghost down this hall and we seem to have eluded him. And I think he pooped. He's a spooky ghost, but I got some photos. I'm gonna go back and develop. Geez, I hope I don't run into Bobby. However, I bet he might be the reason behind all lost homework. Wait, just a moment. We have some breaking news. It seems that our ghost hunters have managed to track down Bobby for an exclusive interview. Let's listen in. Bobby, why have you followed us here? I'm here to take revenge on the lunch ladies. Why? Well, it all started, wait, I mean ended, when I was in the sixth grade. I was at the cafeteria when I was eating my lunch. But... What I didn't know was that the food had expired 15 years ago. I started to feel like I was about to lose my lunch. And then all of a sudden, my world went dark. 
I really should have packed my lunch. Would you stop that already? Anyway, that's how I died. Just hearing that story makes my teeth chatter. If you see Bobby roaming, be sure to thank him for that interview. Hopefully he can st finally rest or at least stop stealing my pencils and slamming doors. Hi, I'm Julia Getchell, and I'm here with Ben Bisman in the Bisman Building. So, what's the history behind this building? Tell you what, Julia, this history goes back seven generations in our family. It goes back to my great-great-great-grandpa. He came over from Germany in 1853, in a real big boat with nine of 11 of his kids. Well, there's all kinds of neat ghost stories in the, in the building. Um, um, there's also a legend of a young little girl that might have been died in the building. And she's supposedly buried in the basement of the building. Yeah, we hear a lot of names. There's Annabella is a name that comes up all the time. And the little girl goes by Ruthie. All this neat wooden stuff, this was all um, made here right in Mansfield. The trees grew here. Um, the brick, a lot of the brick was killed right on site, so they made the bricks and then built the building. And they built this building the same time they were building the Mansfield prison. So the same architects worked on the same buildings, and we shared uh, technology because back in 1886 when they built the building, they really didn't have ways, they didn't have like cranes and engines and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So they had to build scaffoldings and we worked with the guys at the prison, used their technology and then we gave them some ideas and there's a picture right there on the wall of the prison. That's why it's up there. Oh. Okay, right now we're outside of one of the coolers and inside this cooler is where little baby Ruthie is supposedly buried. Pretty interesting little spot and they have groups that come down here and they talk to her with little EVP sessions and K2 meters and so forth and uh, if you look back in there sometimes you'll shut the lights off and you'll see little things flicker and little eyes flicker and things move and shadows and stuff. Oh that's cool. It's pretty interesting. Up next, for all you monsters out there, my friend Reagan has found a way to keep your breath smelling fresh and all those fangs clean. Hi, I am Dr. Tina Natalie Tensenberg. You can call me TNT. It's my nickname because I am always blowing stuff off, and it's my initials. Well, all you monsters out there, I got a new recipe for you. You might know my awesome book, War Werewolves, Witches, and Warlocks, Steps to Food Happiness. Well, I am doing the secret recipe the recipe is on page 2319 XYZ. The first step is to call for your assistance. Assistance! What do you need, TNT? I need my lab coat and my goggles. Um, you forgot my goggles. How can do I how can I do experiments without goggles? How do you do you want me to go blind or something? Thank you. Okay, the first ingredient is vampire bat juice. Take the vampire bat juice and pour it into the cylinder thing. Something's wrong. I just it just doesn't look like. I forgot one ingredient. I forgot snake rum. I don't hope this doesn't blow up. I guess it doesn't work. That's the end. I guess this week's recipe is a failure. I think the solution just makes me want to sing a creepy song. Here's Sherry with the spookiest Halloween songs. Thriller, because you have Michael Jackson as a zombie and he's doing it uh, in the creepy eyes. Yeah. What is it? I want candy. I want candy. Bitsy Bitsy Spider. Because spiders. I don't like spiders. Wow, they were spooky. I wish I could hear the students say their reviews on the music. Speaking of reviews, here's Hannah with her book review. For a Halloween special, I picked a spectacular book for you. Night Runner is about a boy named Zach who lost both his parents and has some allergies that led him to live in a mental ward instead of a foster home. His schedule is different from other patients. He does everything at night. Everything changes when a stranger on a motorcycle crashes into the ward's lobby. This book is full of twists and turns and mysteries that will leave you on the edge of your seat. 
To uncover the mystery of what Zek is, read Night Runner. Well, that wraps up our first special edition of Weapon News. You can email us to tell us what you think. Visit weaponnews.weebly.com. Hope we see you next time on Weapon News.